This is the DJP Update podcast series, showing the passion of individuals for pursuits outside of their profession or employment. Enjoy. This is Dr. Donald Palmasano. I'm in Gloucester, Massachusetts, talking to my friend, Dr. Mario Mata. Uh, he's a cardiologist in Salem. And I want to know about his special interests outside of cardiology. Mario, tell us about your interests outside of cardiology. All right. I've been interested in astronomy all my life. I even as a kid, I uh, was always fascinated by the sky. So my parents bought me a small telescope when I was seven years old. And I wanted a much bigger one almost immediately. Being immigrants, they couldn't afford a bigger one. So, they, so I finally made a deal with my father a few years later. If he gave me the money to just buy parts, I'd build my own. And I did. So I built... Uh, age 14, a 8-inch uh, F7 telescope, which is a reasonably big scope for a kid. And I used that for a number of years. And I, my plan was always to do astrophysics. In college, kind of got interested in medicine, couldn't decide. I was a physics math major, but uh, I took uh, uh, organic chem in third year just in case I decided on medicine. I still couldn't decide, and in senior year, uh, was going to apply to both. I got an early acceptance to medical school, and that's where I went, but I could have gone either way. It's a great field. I'm interested in it. When medical school was over, um, I kind of missed astronomy a bit. We went to an astronomy convention, and my, uh, <laughs> my, wife, and I, uh, my wife was with me. And they saw these uh, blanks for grinding a 16-inch telescope, which is a pretty substantial size scope. Um, and I was just in my internship year. Um, so I, I guess she looked at the forlorn look in my eye and she just rolled her eyes and said, all right, get them. So I got these uh, blanks. And in the course of my residency, ground a 16-inch telescope. And just as I entered uh, fellowship, I had a 16-inch telescope, and I've been using that for many years. <clears throat> so even though I uh, have a profession in astronomy, I really enjoyed doing astronomy at night. It could be, uh, I get a kick out of just viewing, but I also take photos. I enjoy that, and I enjoy doing research. I'm uh, affiliated with a number of professional amateur collaboration projects and organizations and I've had the pleasure of uh, uh, getting my name on a number of research projects through the years. So what interests you about astronomy? Mm, what doesn't? <laughs> it's a big field. It's a big universe out there. There's so many things to see. Um, I'm primarily interested in galactic astronomy, so that's why the last few telescopes I built were rather large. 32-inch telescopes. I built two of them now. And I used that, I got those really big scopes primarily to do galactic research. So I take a lot of uh, images, I, uh, projects like supernova searches uh, and distant galaxies. That helps you determine the, uh, in fact, that was that research in collaboration with others that determined that the universe is not con going to contract, it's going to expand forever. Uh, supernova, um, gamma ray burst uh, projects, um, variable stars. I'm a past president of the American Association of Variable Star Observers. Um, you learn a lot from things that change in the sky. So young stars and old stars change a lot. And by watching them and collecting lots of data, one person can't do it, but in a large group collaboration, you get enough data that it's worthwhile. Um, and um, that database becomes very valuable to researchers. So, what was your most exciting moment in astronomy? Oh, that, hmm. that's hard to say. 
Uh, I mean, I enjoy just observing, but probably excitement-wise, catching a gamma ray burst. I've done a few, and one of them ended up being a, a really far one. And in fact, I still remember give the date because I have it on a, uh, a commendation thing. It's uh, on October, uh, yeah, October second, two thousand four. Uh, I caught the uh, one of the furthest things ever seen by an amateur astronomer, and it was useful. Um, later that day, the Keck telescope published a uh, spectral analysis of the object, and uh, so I still like that. It has, it's an astronomical circular that lists my observatory on top and the Keck telescope, which is the world's biggest telescope, down below. Um, but uh, catching, uh, I like to catch uh, transient objects like that. So uh, the AVSO, NASA, uh, in collaboration, have a system where if a satellite catches a gamma ray burst, they'll beep me on my beeper and if it's at the right time of day and it's clear, I'll go out and try to get images of it. Um, supernova searches and then slow steady work of variable stars which require many data points over the course of years. Um, and then special projects that come along. There will always be a researcher who needs some data on a particular object. i got several fact uh, that need to do in the next couple of months uh, whenever it's clear. So those are the things I like to do. So tell me about this giant telescope that you built that comes out the top of your house through a <laughs> dome. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's my latest and I think best. It's, uh, it's an unusual telescope. It's a relay scope design. A uh, close friend of mine uh, designed it when I was going to build another telescope for this house. Uh, I was going to do a Newtonian telescope because I've been building those all my life. I pretty much know how to do those. But all telescopes have some aberrations. Uh, refractors have color aberrations. Newtonian telescopes have what's called coma aberrations. There are some correctors for those these days, but uh, he came up to me and said he studied the Hubble fix. In fact, he was involved in part of the engineering for the fix of the uh, Hubble telescope. And he said, instead of building a Newtonian, I can give you a perfect optical system design, which I've been playing with, he complained with for 20 years. And he says, uh, he'll give you the design, you build it. And I go, if, he, if I didn't know him well, and he was just kind of someone I didn't know, I probably wouldn't have done this, but knowing he, that he actually knew what he was talking about, I took a leap of faith and followed his design and built, uh, it's a rather complicated optical system, but he helped. So it was good to have him help me with some of the finer points. I did most of the grinding and polishing and he came over and helped quite a bit. And after all the optics were done, <clears throat> uh, started working on all the mechanical parts, which was basically done by scrap metals and uh, throwaway parts from various industries. And it came together nicely. And it works very well. So, uh, describing telescope terms, how large this telescope is. All right. Well, I'll put it in camera terms, and most people probably understand that. So, it, okay, in telescope terms, it's a 32 inch diameter or 0.8 meter main mirror, and it's an F6. So, uh, that gives you a little bit of an idea of the. Uh, uh, the optical train. So it would be the equivalent of a 32-inch um, F6 on a camera. That's a rather big lens. Wow. So where would individuals go if they wanted to learn more about what you have done with astronomy? Um, the group, one of the groups I belong to, the Amateur Telescope Makers of Boston, at, they have a website, very nice, atmob.org, and they have a, it's open to the public. You can look, when you get to the main page, you see gallery up above on the uh, banner. Click on banner, click on the uh, gallery, and uh, the drop-down menu, you'll see Wingashik Observatory. 
I got about 400 something pictures posted. So there's f five files of uh, Wingersheek Observatory photos. Feel free to peruse. Thank you very much for your hospitality and for your time in this educational session. We're ending now with Dr. Mata. Thank you very much.